Good morning, brethren. We serve a faithful God who is holy in all his ways, perfect. Does it make sense for us to be anything less than giving everything that we have for this, the God that we serve? Does it make sense for us to be half-hearted or to not take anything seriously when you serve a God who is faithful like the God we serve? It doesn't make sense. But there are many people who are half-hearted and slothful and give God meager parts of their life. This is not acceptable. Now, we have a part of us that desires to be half-hearted, desires to uh, be slothful and do things half-heartedly when it comes to whether it's dressing or preparing or working, whatever it is, half-heartedness. Now, I thought about this also with uh, when people are serving the Lord, there was a time where it's like this time that we're living in, things are getting worse and worse. Even when, a, when people would sit down to eat dinner, they would use certain utensils and, and have the plate, everything was, is set out. But you've noticed even after time, they've come out with TV dinners and different things. Things just progress to be half-hearted. But we're told we are not to be half-hearted. Second Peter 3.14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be, may be, found of him in peace. Because there's no peace outside of him. There's no peace in half-heartedness and slothfulness. There's no peace in laziness. Without spot and blameless. If you're found outside of Christ, you're not going to be found without spot or blameless. If you're found living for the, for the world, you're not going to be found blameless without spot. This, this is not going to happen. Because we're looking for, see, we're looking for something. We're preparing for something. We're not just sitting around waiting for the days to go by. We're preparing for a day. This is the day, the day of the Lord. When he returns, we are a people who are going to be ready for this day. There are some people, they are, they live their lives just kind of like going through a cloud. And when that day comes, it's going to take them off guard. And they're not going to be ready. This is a day where the heavens will be on fire and shall be dissolved. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. I, this recent tragedy that happened in our area, I heard someone say, we're not going to let this kick our butt. That's basically what he said. And I thought, you don't know what you're talking about. you got to be kidding me. When this day comes, if you're not prepared... You're not going to be talking like that. Nobody's going to be talking like that. Only those who are prepared and are ready for that day are going to be at peace. There is no peace for those who are not prepared and ready. For those who are not diligently preparing right now, no peace. Not now or the day that the Lord returns. But think about this. Think about what we're preparing for. We are looking for a new heavens and a new earth. See, God isn't just saying, stay away from this, but I got nothing for you. See, this is, this is the deception. The deception is that Satan says, come to me. I've got something better than what God has to offer. This is, this, you have to be blinded to, to, come, to be sucked into that. Because what God has for us is far exceedingly better than what Satan has to offer. But you've got to be able to see it. And this takes diligence. It takes diligence and it takes us pressing in and, and preparing. So we're going to have a new heavens and a new earth. No longer 
will you have to deal with ungodliness. Right now, we do have to deal with ungodliness. It's hurtful. It's hard to deal with. It, it's, there's shame. There's all kinds of things that attach themselves to, to, to ungodliness. And for those who want to be holy and want to uh, be with their God, this is hard to deal with. But there, that's not going to be there anymore. So this is all part of the deal that you're going to have being with your God. You're not going to deal with ungodliness anymore. Amen. We're talking about a place where dwelleth righteousness. So why are we still here? If it's so good there, why are we still here? Because God's getting glory out of it. He's getting glory out of us living holy and righteous and acceptable now at this time. He's getting glory out of his people looking for him in an evil day. We have chosen to look for him because he has chosen us. He has chosen us. He has set us aside for his people. And we wholeheartedly live for him in the evil day. He gets glory for this. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. One of the keys to succeeding, to overcoming, to be ready in that day is to know that God, he knows how to keep you. Not only does he know how to keep you, he's willing to keep you in this day. He is not a weak God that cannot, can, will tell you to do something but can't back you up. This is a God who comes with power to back up and to give you that what you need. Amen. It's the Lord who will re, re, uh, reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Peter 2.10 See, it looks like right now the evil are just doing whatever they want. They laugh at you for being holy and ungod for being holy and righteous. The ungodly, the the they throw accusations that, that, oh, you're a fool, but they're a fool. See, the Lord's reserving them for a day of judgment. So we are told to be diligent now. Be diligent because the time is short, but it is a time to be holy and acceptable. All day long we have choices that affect our eternal life. So that you weigh these out. Hard choices, yes. Choices that hurt. Choices that are not easy to make. But you weigh it out compared to eternity. Eternity far outweighs the hard times you're going through. It is possible that we can fall from our steadfastness. 2 Peter 3.17 so we don't have any guarantees outside of Christ. All the guarantees are in Christ. How do we want the Lord to find us? When he returns, the question is, how do you want to be found? Because you will be found. Without spot, blameless. That's how we want to be found. And that's in Christ Jesus. This is impossible if we live with our heads in the world. But in Christ Jesus, it is possible. God is faithful to his people that are diligent. Notice that it doesn't say if you're half-hearted and living ungodly that God will just accept you just the way you are. This is not the language. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 said, God is faithful by whom Ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Not the fellowship of the world. See, we're detaching ourselves from the world and, and we're attaching ourselves to Christ. We're not, this is not fellowship with sinners. It's fellowship with our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not fellowship with our job with our families, our hobbies. It's fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, everything else is not going to save you. 
Everything else is not going to help you. So if there's, if you need to make a decision, should I give up this or Christ Jesus? You give up that for Christ Jesus. That's, that's the answer. Whatever your question is, is how important is this? Is it drawing you away from Christ? Cut it off now. It's going to be cut off anyway. Cut it off now. Fellowship with his dear son, Jesus. God is faithful to them in Christ. He is faithful to keep you without spot and blameless. Not to them that live and fellowship with the world. He's not faithful to them. If you think that you can live without Christ, half-hearted in your life, for, and just give yourself to the world, and that God's going to be faithful to you, you're wrong. God's faithful to them who are in his son, Jesus Christ. But with Jesus, if there is something in the world, I mean, excuse me, but without Jesus, if there's something in the world that, this world that captures your attention, you will forsake Christ. This is why it's got to be cut off. Because if it captures your attention, it's just a matter of time before you forsake Christ. Matthew 19.22 says, The young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. Something had captured, he had done everything right, but something had captured his attention and drew him away from Christ. So even though he had done everything right, he walked away with nothing. He thought he had great possessions in the world, but what does he have now? That's the question. What does he have now to possess? The only one that would make him without spot and blameless, he forsook for possessions that he doesn't even have anymore. Those who turn from God are not the point. God is the point. And what he's doing with his son, Jesus Christ, that's the point. It doesn't matter how many people leave Jesus. It's the ones that may be found of him in peace that will be with God. Those who forsake Jesus... They're not going to be the point. It's Jesus Christ and those who are in him. In the end, God will be faithful to care for them. Many will leave, but many will be cared for. There's a number that cannot be numbered that God's going to care for. John 6, 66 says, From that time many of his disciples went away, and watch no more with him. Notice it didn't say how Jesus ran after them. Because he loved them so much. They just went away. 1 John 2.19 says. They went off from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us. They would not have. Con they no doubt have, would have continued. That they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So those who forsake Christ, they are not the point. It's those who love Jesus, those who are diligent, those who continue steadfast, holy and acceptable, live their life righteous, they are the point in Christ Jesus. As we are diligent, God is a faithful God who shall, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. This is the work that God is doing. He is going to receive glory for this. The point is God. He cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13 if we, if we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. But to all who are diligent and believe, God will care for, 
what, his, what he has promised is a guarantee. Because he has the power to back up what he says he's going to do. He will take care of you in Christ Jesus. 2 Peter 1 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is of the world through lust. So this is what we're doing, brethren, today. We're escaping the world, and we're coming to Jesus. And God is faithful to bring us all the way. So let us prepare as Brother Aaron comes up to teach us and minister to us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to escape this world and to stay in Christ so that we may finish victoriously at the end. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I am thankful that you are God.